Standing on the rooftop of a towering building, you marveled at the breathtaking view that unfolded before him. From this vantage point, he had a bird's eye perspective of the entire city, its sprawling streets and shimmering lights stretching out beneath him like a glittering tapestry. It was a sight that filled him with a sense of both awe and trepidation, for his months of tireless research had all converged on this very place. The passage of time on the rooftop had begun to take its toll on you. After an hour of relentless vigilance, he found himself growing increasingly weary and restless. The city below remained eerily calm, offering no hints or clues to the mysteries he sought to uncover. A deep yawn overcame him, and weariness began to set in. As fatigue tugged at his eyelids, he wrestled with the urge to succumb to sleep, knowing that patience was his greatest ally in this relentless pursuit. As Yu's mind began to drift, he found himself immersed in memories of his mother. He couldn't help but think of the warmth of her presence and the strength she had exuded. In that quiet moment on the rooftop, he pondered the long road ahead, wondering how much time and effort it would take to reach the level of grace and resilience that his mother had. Even as Yu acknowledged his own limitations and recognized that escape might be his best chance in a confrontation, a spark of curiosity and intrigue suddenly seized his attention. His gaze sharpened, and his heart quickened its beat as he fixated on something unusual. In the midst of the sprawling cityscape below, a faint glimmer or movement had stirred. In the dimly lit alleyway below, a peculiar figure emerged, moving with purposeful strides through the shadows. Yu's gaze fixated on the enigmatic silhouette, and he couldn't help but wonder about the motives that compelled someone to venture out alone at this late hour. The stranger in the alleyway drew Yu's unwavering attention, his gaze narrowing as suspicion took hold. Something about the figure's demeanor and actions felt out of place in the serene night, prompting a surge of caution within you. His senses were finely attuned to the slightest anomaly, and he couldn't shake the feeling that this encounter might hold the answers he had been relentlessly pursuing. The stranger's path led him to a weathered fence adorned with a prominent no-entry sign, its dark red letters standing out in the muted surroundings. To use astonishment, the mysterious figure showed no regard for the warning as he approached the barrier. In a single fluid motion, the stranger executed a graceful leap, effortlessly clearing the fence with an agility. With each passing moment, Yu's curiosity swelled like an insatiable tide. As the stranger disappeared into the depths of an abandoned building, the lure of the unknown became irresistible. Unable to resist the magnetic pull of this enigmatic figure and the secrets he might hold, you made a determined choice to follow the stranger. Determined to uncover the truth, you summoned his resolve and followed suit, leaping off the rooftop he had been perched upon. Through the darkness, he gracefully maneuvered among the tree branches, his every motion a testament to his agility and resolve. Finally, with a loud landing, you found himself on solid ground, poised to continue his pursuit into the enigmatic depths of the night. With a determined stride, you made his way toward the abandoned building, mirroring the path taken by the enigmatic stranger. As he crossed the threshold into the dark interior, a shroud of obscurity enveloped him. The vast expanse of the building lay before him, devoid of any discernible features. It was a place where shadows held sway, and the silence was palpable, leaving you to wonder what secrets lay hidden in this desolate space. Yu's relentless pursuit of answers led him to explore the abandoned building's dark recesses. His keen eyes scanned the first floor, revealing no trace of the enigmatic stranger. Realizing that the elusive figure must be elsewhere, you ascended a creaking staircase that led to the upper levels. Upon reaching the upper floor, you couldn't help but notice his own breath forming a visible vapor in the air. It was as if the temperature had plummeted abruptly, enveloping him in an unexpected chill. A sense of unease settled over him, and he couldn't shake the feeling that something was profoundly amiss. With every step that led him further into the enigmatic upper floor, Yu's unease grew, casting an ominous pall over his surroundings. Then, his nose caught an unpleasant odor, causing him to reflexively cover his mouth with his hand. Disgust welled up inside him as the stench grew stronger, further heightening his sense of foreboding in the mysterious surroundings. Yu's exploration led him to a sealed door that seemed to emanate the foul smell he had detected earlier. His curiosity peaked, he approached the door cautiously convinced that the answers to his questions lay beyond it. However, just as he reached out to touch it, a sudden, unexpected poke from the stranger sent a jolt of surprise coursing through him. Yu's heart pounded in his chest, and his hand instinctively moved towards the baseball bat he had brought along, ready to defend himself from the sudden scare caused by the stranger. However, the stranger, 
appearing surprisingly calm, pointed out that it was you who had been following him all along. Their meeting took a mysterious turn as the stranger's warning hung heavy in the air, signaling the danger that lurked in their surroundings. A sense of profound unease settled upon you as he realized that something was undeniably amiss about the abandoned building. Despite his fear, his determination led him to demand answers from the stranger. The enigmatic figure met his gaze and, in a somber tone, disclosed that the nauseating stench that pervaded the place was the unmistakable odor of decaying human flesh. A horrified gasp escaped Yu's lips, and he couldn't help but let out a loud cry of shock upon hearing the stranger's unsettling revelation. Yet, the stranger, their expression unwavering, urgently motioned for silence, emphasizing the importance of remaining quiet. In hushed tones, the enigmatic figure cautioned you that making noise and drawing attention to themselves would only render them vulnerable in this ominous place. The stranger, with a hint of resignation, dismissed Yu's a need for further explanation, asserting that even if they were to divulge the truth, it would be beyond belief. Still, curiosity gnawed at you, and at last he inquired if the source of the horrors they faced was, in fact, a demon. Abruptly halting in their tracks, the stranger fixed an intense gaze on you, demanding to know how he had come to possess knowledge about demons. Surprisingly, the stranger eventually relented, conceding that the malevolent presence they faced was, indeed, a demon that needed to be exorcised. With a heavy heart, you began to recount the grim reality that a demon had already claimed the lives of his mother and numerous innocent civilians. As they continued on their path, the stranger explained to you the significance of the putrid smell of rotting flesh. It was a telltale sign that the malevolent presence they were pursuing was on the verge of transcending into a full-fledged demon. With a heavy heart, you absorbed the grim truth shared by the stranger about the irreversible nature of demonization. Once a being succumbed to it, there was no turning back, and all hope was lost. In a subdued tone, the stranger revealed his intention to partake in an ancient ritual, offering you the chance to witness the exorcism. He reassured you that this act would not contravene any rules, given that you had already confronted demons firsthand. You, his brow furrowed in deep contemplation, struggled to wrap his head around the enigmatic concepts of demons and exorcism. The stranger paused, as if carefully considering how to explain the intricacies of his world to the bewildered you. With a patient demeanor, he clarified that to become a shinobi, one must undergo a grueling trial, a path filled with challenges and secrets known only to those initiated into the ancient tradition. The stranger introduced himself as Shin. He confessed to being an outsider, not hailing from the realm they currently traversed. Intriguingly, Shin reached into his pouch and retrieved an object. He adds that he has a brother, another enigmatic figure in this unfolding narrative, who was engaged in the investigation of a mysterious explosion that had rocked their lives several months ago. Shin's eyes gleamed with determination as he articulated his motivation. He believed that by rescuing the civilian trapped within the ominous building, his brother would be compelled to grant him access to the elusive trials of the shinobi ritual. You couldn't believe what he heard from Shin. He had no idea how to exorcise a demon. Shin confessed that he was unable to use Tenchi manipulation, which was essential for seeing the first hell demons. The only time he could spot them was when they inhabited a human host. But he had a solution. An enchanted music that could loosen the demon's hold. Yu was eager to hear the enchanted music that could exorcise a demon. He wondered if Shin had a musical instrument that could produce such a sound. Shin shook his head and said that he had no instruments with him, nor did he know how to play any. Yu's gaze bore into Shin, a swirling mixture of anticipation and letdown painted across his face. All that buildup, like a crescendo in a symphony, had led to this moment of crestfallen realization. Shin, feeling a stifling pressure within his nostrils, courteously excused himself, retrieving the discreet nose plug from his nose, he yearned for a breath of freshness, his discomfort evident in the furrow of his brow. Beside him, Yu now understood Shin's immunity to the pungent aroma that had besieged them. As Shin gently places his nose plugs into a small box that had emerged from his pouch, he starts to sniff the odor around him. The scent that assaulted him upon taking off his defenses left him aghast. Swiftly, he masked his nose with his fingers, the urgent realization pulsating through his veins that he was running out of time. With a sense of urgency that bordered on desperation, Shin abruptly tore himself away from Yu's presence. He didn't have time for explanations. He simply implored Yu to depart. His determined steps carried him swiftly towards the room, a fortress barricaded against the malevolent entity that lurked within. 
With an almost reckless abandon, Shin hurled himself against the barricade, his entire body a relentless force of nature. In a thunderous explosion of sound, he shattered the defenses wide open, the deafening bang serving as a testament to his unshakable determination. Shin ventured cautiously into the room, his every step marked by a palpable air of trepidation. Notably, a mystic symbol, reminiscent of a talisman, adhered to the door, its cryptic markings whispering ancient secrets. Yet, as the door swung open, a sudden, ominous transformation occurred. The symbol burst into flames, casting eerie shadows that danced upon the room's walls, as if awakening a long dormant power. In a different corner of the shadowed realm, an enigmatic figure cloaked in darkness found themselves abruptly thrust into a state of alarm. Their eyes widened beneath the hood as they witnessed a talisman adorned with identical symbols suddenly ignite in fervent flames. The realization struck like a thunderbolt, their protective seal had been breached, and the unknown entity they had guarded against was now unleashed. Upon crossing the threshold into the room, Shin's keen eyes scanned the surroundings, only to be met by an unsettling void. The emptiness within was palpable, a stark contrast to the oppressive stench that had drawn him here. His certainty was unshaken. The source of that foul odor undoubtedly lingered within these walls, concealing itself from view. From the confines of the room, macabre entities, resembling ghastly strands of hair, writhed ominously, their intent hidden from you's oblivious gaze. Unseen by you, they slithered closer, concealed in the shadows, inching towards their unwitting target. A chilling apprehension tightened its grip around Shin's heart as he sensed the looming malevolence. The urgency of the situation was crystal clear, he needed to locate the elusive entity before it could fully manifest as a demonic force. Without hesitation, he turned to you, his voice a harbinger of caution as he implored him to flee while there was still a chance to escape the impending peril. In a disconcerting revelation, you became acutely aware of the sinister hair strands that dangled ominously before him. His silence caught Shin's attention, leading him to glance back at you. As their eyes locked, Shin's eyes widened in sheer terror, for the malevolent entity had materialized right behind you, a foreboding and nightmarish presence that defied reason. Its deep blue eyes like two abysses of unfathomable depth. Long, disheveled hair cascaded in wild abandon, an eerie curtain framing a face veiled in enigmatic sorrow. The creature stood behind you, its tattered red dress billowing like a spectral shroud, a haunting embodiment of a forgotten past. In a sinister tableau, the demon-like entity's hand ascended, fingers contorting into vicious, claw-like appendages. Its movements possessed an unnatural fluidity, an ominous prelude to a deadly strike, as it readied to unleash its malevolent power. In the tense stillness of that moment, Yu's mind flashed back to a harrowing memory. It was a recollection of a dark tunnel where he had encountered another human, possessed, and driven to madness. In that chilling encounter, a brutal strike had left him grievously wounded, the pain etched into his very being. The past and present converged, intensifying his fear as he faced the looming threat of the demon-like entity's deadly strike. A haunting sense of familiarity descended upon you as he watched the unfolding scene, a disconcerting echo of the past he had once endured. Paralyzed by an overwhelming fear, he found himself trapped in a nightmarish loop. In the grip of dread, he pleaded with his own body to break free from its paralysis and evade the impending danger. Driven by a surge of courage and selflessness, Shin catapulted himself forward in a single, heroic leap. His sole intention was to protect you from the malevolent entity's impending attack. The demon-like creature's wicked claws found their target, but it was Shin who absorbed the devastating blow. As Yu was forcefully propelled away from danger, his voice erupted in a panicked cry, a desperate utterance of Shin's name. Simultaneously, Shin's agonized scream pierced the air, an anguished proclamation of the pain that coursed through him as the demon's claws found their mark. In the wake of the harrowing encounter, Yu's fall to the ground echoed with a resounding thump, his body hitting the floor with a jarring impact. Beside him, Shin too crumpled to the ground, his shoulder marred by the blood seeping from the vicious attack. In response to Yu's concerned call, Shin's voice wavered as he feigned reassurance, assuring that he was fine. Yet, beneath the veneer of false bravado, blood continued to flow unabated from his wounded shoulder. With each measured stride, the possessed creature drew nearer to the boys, its approach shrouded in an aura of dread. Shin found himself within the demon's chilling line of sight. Its clawed hand, now stained with Shin's blood, twitched with anticipation. Yu's voice rang out in frantic urgency, 
a plea that punctuated the impending danger. He implored Shin to move, his words a desperate warning as the demon bore down upon him with relentless intent. The torment etched onto Shin's face was undeniable, his pain a formidable obstacle that hindered his movements. In that dire moment, Yu's eyes fell upon his baseball bat. Realization dawned upon him like a lightning bolt. He knew that he had to act swiftly, for Shin's life hung in the balance. With Shin perilously close to another devastating blow, the demon's presence was a looming threat. Its clawed hand hung in the air, ready to descend. Yet, a sudden shift occurred as its malevolent gaze was inexplicably pulled away. Something else had captured its attention, diverting its focus from Shin in a mystifying turn of events. In a breathtaking moment of bravery, it was none other than Yu who seized the opportunity. Gripping his baseball bat like a warrior wielding a kendo sword, he channeled his determination into a fluid, precise motion. But the malevolent entity exhibited an uncanny defense. It deftly blocked the attack with its sinuous hair. Frustration welled up within Yu as his bat splintered under the strain. Undeterred, Yu pressed on, wielding the broken end of the bat as a makeshift weapon. However, his renewed assault was abruptly halted as the demon's hair coiled around him and his hand. The demon's chilling laughter resonated through the room as it gazed upon Yu's futile struggle, reveling in his helplessness. Yu's eyes glistened with tears as he poured every ounce of his strength into his futile struggle against the demon's hair. Yet, in an unexpected turn of events, the floor directly above them, on the topmost level, began to splinter and crack ominously. The deafening cracking noise escalated in intensity, a stark indication that the floor above could no longer bear the weight of a massive object. Abruptly, a colossal vault plunged into freefall, its massive bulk hurtling towards the demon and the two boys below with relentless force. Yu's quick thinking became his lifeline as he executed a bold maneuver. With a swift strike of his leg to the demon's head, he harnessed the momentum to propel himself away from the impending catastrophe. As Yu's bold maneuver played out, the demon's hair, which had ensnared his hand, relinquished its grip with a sudden snap. Yu was propelled backward, hurtling away from the imminent danger. Simultaneously, the colossal object crashed down upon the demon with cataclysmic force, the impact unleashing a cacophony of destruction. Yu's descent from peril was a testament to his quick thinking and reflexes. He landed gracefully on his knees, his heart pounding from the close call. In the aftermath, his concern shifted to Shin, and he extended a steady hand to his injured friend. With unwavering determination, Yu led Shin away from the danger zone. In a surreal twist of fate, the vault and fragmented stones that had plummeted downward were propelled back into the air, defying all logic. The demon, with an ominous presence that sent shivers down their spines, rose once more. A malevolent purple aura enveloped it, casting an eerie glow that seemed to devour the very essence of the room. Its form, more terrifying than before, emanated an aura of boundless malice, a nightmarish entity poised to consume anything in its path. In the midst of its malevolent resurgence, the demon's attention was momentarily diverted, something catching its eye at the corner of its eerie, abyssal vision. In a swift, chilling motion, its serpentine hair shot forth, like venomous snakes in pursuit, lashing onto you once again. The young man found himself ensnared, his escape thwarted by the relentless grip of the demon's hair. The demon reclaimed you, its malevolence palpable in the room. You, consumed by terror, made futile attempts to free himself, but his struggles were as fruitless as a prey ensnared in a spider's web. In that harrowing moment, he came to a chilling realization that they were utterly outmatched by the demon. It was a stark awakening, a stark disbelief that they had dared to challenge the entity in a futile exorcism attempt. As despair loomed, a solitary drop of water fell onto Yu's face, an unexpected intrusion. Startled, he looked upward, only to discover that the ceiling had been breached, revealing an intricate network of metal-like wires protruding ominously. In the throes of the moment, an ingenious idea sparked within him. With adrenaline coursing through his veins, Yu extended his arms as far as humanly possible, his fingers closing around one of the steel rods protruding from the compromised ceiling. With a deafening snap, the rod yielded to his unyielding willpower. Summoning every ounce of strength within him, Yu struck the demon with a mighty blow, channeling the force of desperation into his attack. Yu and Shin, their escape from the malevolent monster a stroke of miraculous luck, made their way downstairs. As they descended, Yu couldn't help but voice his burning curiosity. 
he questioned the logic behind Shin's plan to exorcise the demon without an enchanted instrument. Shin, still shaken and humbled by their harrowing encounter, acknowledged his lapse in judgment. He admitted that he had underestimated the sheer power of the malevolent entity. As if roused from a brief respite, the monstrous entity erupted into a frenzy. Its malevolence knew no bounds as it unleashed its fury upon the surroundings. Its spike-like hair became a deadly weapon, drilling relentlessly into the floor. The hair bore through the layers, perilously close to the boys, the near-fatal onslaught narrowly avoided by a matter of inches. Baffled by the demon's rapid resurgence, Yu's bewilderment intensified as more rocks tumbled around them, each evasion a narrow escape. Through the hole in the ceiling, their tormentor locked onto them with an unyielding stare. With a relentless determination, it surged through the opening, closing in on the boys like a relentless predator on a deadly mission. With claw-like hands outstretched and spike-like hair poised to strike, the demon closed in on its prey with deadly intent. Fleeing for their lives, the two boys raced away as fast as their legs could carry them. Then, in a hair-raising instant, you spotted the impending attack hurtling toward them. With split-second precision, he pushed Shin to the ground, and the hair-like spikes narrowly passed over them, sparing them from certain doom. In the midst of their frantic escape, Shin's phone slipped from his grasp, skidding away from them on the floor. You, in a stroke of luck, didn't come to a crashing halt as he tumbled but the demon's hair snaked around his legs, and snaring him and beginning to drag him inexorably back toward the malevolent entity. In a heart-stopping turn of events, you found himself suspended upside down, coming face to face with the grotesque demon. Its deep blue eyes bore into him, while an additional mouth emerged grotesquely from the center of its head. The demon's appearance was a nightmarish spectacle, a macabre fusion of horror. You, suspended helplessly in mid-air, let out a desperate cry, mere moments from becoming a meal for the two horrifying heads. Shin's eyes widen as he sees the looming threat that could end Yu's life. He knows he has only seconds to act. He yells at Neon, his smartphone, to play a song called Go to Hell. The smartphone obviously not being so smart makes things more dramatic than it already is and demands if Shin said farewell. Shin tries again, this time making sure to enunciate each word clearly as he shouts them out loud. He hopes that the smartphone who is not so smart will finally understand his voice commands and do what he asks. The phone finally gets the message and begins to play the soundtrack Go to Hell. As the sound waves travel through the air, the demon lets out a horrifying scream, clutching its ears as the sound tortures its very soul. The demon writhes in pain, unable to bear the sonic assault that Shin has unleashed on it. In that instant, Yu is freed from the clutches of the demon and is hurled onto the floor. He lands with a thud, feeling a surge of relief and pain. Shin looks at Yu with relief, glad that the sounds emanating from his phone are working. Shin reveals that the source of the pain for the demon is a recording from a friend who was skilled enough to mimic the frequency produced by a magical instrument. They take advantage of this opportunity to make a dash for the emergency exit. They run as fast as they can, hoping that the demon will not recover soon. But just as they thought they had escaped from the evil creature, Shin looked in horror at his phone. He saw that the battery was almost dead, and the recording was about to stop. He knew that without the sound, the demon would come after them again. Shin explained that he was using the GPS on his phone to track where he had left his seeds to find his way back home. As they ran away as fast as their legs could carry them, you remarked that it was not the best time to be cracking any jokes. They finally reached the door and you slams into it with his shoulder, hoping to break it open. But the hair strands from the demon have wrapped around the door, preventing it from opening. They are trapped with no way out. Shin's eyes widen in terror as he realizes that they have run out of time. The demon starts dashing its way towards the boys, closing the distance with each stride. All they can do is watch helplessly as they press their backs against the jammed door. At the crucial moment, suddenly a chilly matter starts forming in front of Shin, and in a flash of light, an ice wall materializes between the demon and the two boys. The wall is sturdy and dense, obstructing the demon's way and vision. The boys are amazed, curious how this occurred. Suddenly a cloaked figure appeared and demanded Shin what he was doing in a place like this. Shin recognized that the savior was none other than his big brother. The hero of the moment stood tall, icy mist emanating from his hands and a frosty heroic aura surrounding him. He had the power to manipulate ice, and he had used it to save Shin and Yu from the demon. Overwhelmed with gratitude, Yu gazed skyward, 
his eyes fixated on the majestic arrival of Shin's elder sibling, a towering figure who seemed to possess an air of authority that commanded respect. With the precision of a seasoned shinobi, a bolt of ice shot forth, its trajectory ending at the door that had been rendered immovable by the malevolent presence of the demon. Upon impact, the door commenced splintering, succumbing to the frigid power of the bolt. In a commanding tone, Shin's elder brother ordered an immediate evacuation from the building. Without hesitation, Yu sprang into action, his powerful kick crashing through the door, creating a gaping hole as if it were mere paper. Concealed behind a formidable wall of ice, the demon could only watch helplessly as the two boys executed a safe escape. The demon understanding that reaching the boys is impossible due to the shinobi, turns its predatory gaze towards Shin's older brother now. Recognizing the insurmountable obstacle, it redirected its malevolent focus towards Shin's elder brother, now the object of its predatory hunger. With malicious intent, the demon readied itself to launch a barrage of hair as a formidable weapon directed at the shinobi. Yet, in a display of masterful defense, a new ice wall manifested, effortlessly deflecting each menacing strand and leaving the demon frustrated in its failed offensive. Descending with agile grace, the shinobi leaped down to confront the demon, seamlessly deflecting every oncoming attack with expertly conjured ice walls. Upon landing, a focused and unyielding gaze emanated from the shinobi, directed squarely at the malevolent entity. Assessing the situation, Yu and Shin deemed their current position as a safe vantage point to observe the unfolding battle. Yu questioned the capability of his older brother to confront the demon, a query to which Shin responded with a resolute nod, expressing confidence in the elder sibling's prowess unlike himself. The demon, unwavering in its relentless assault, pressed on with unceasing attacks. In response, the shinobi displayed unwavering skill, deflecting each onslaught until the moment arrived for a tactical maneuver. Close in proximity, the command was given, and the ice glass shattered, altering the dynamics of the confrontation. Fragmenting into multiple shards suspended in the air, the ice glass created a dazzling display. Seizing the moment, the shinobi executed a powerful leap, and as their hand made contact with the ground, a cascade of ice shards was unleashed, hurtling with precision towards the encroaching demon. In a desperate bid to ward off the barrage of glass pieces, the demon utilized its hair as a protective shield, but the relentless assault proved too overwhelming. Numerous shards successfully breached its defenses, puncturing the demonic form with a persistence that spoke of the shinobi's unwavering skill. With adept manipulation, the shinobi shaped a luminous ball of aura in its palm, launching it decisively in the direction of the approaching demon. In its wake, the energy trail left behind a chilling spectacle of icy spikes embedded in the ground, adding a layer of frosty peril to the battlefield. Sensing the imminent threat, the demon swiftly adopted a defensive stance, curling its hair in front of it, forming a formidable shield against the approaching threat. Undeterred, the creature prepared for a powerful retaliation, readying itself to generate additional hair for a devastating and overwhelming assault. In a strategic maneuver, the shinobi had ascended into the air, prepared for a swift and forceful strike. As the demon realized the imminent strike, it hastily directed all its hair towards the airborne shinobi, creating a dynamic clash in midair. Against all expectations, the demon's hair managed to pierce the airborne shinobi, catching the agile warrior off guard. The devastating attack left the shinobi's body torn into shreds, an unexpected and tragic outcome in the midst of the intense confrontation. Yu's eyes widened in horror as the realization of their only savior's demise struck with cruel clarity. Yet, amidst the despair, Shin's vigilant eyes stayed resolutely fixed on the unfolding battle. As the demon's gazes upward, it only finds glass pieces falling down. A delayed realization setting in that it had fallen prey to a shrewd trick. In a masterful display of strategy, the true shinobi had already maneuvered behind, landing a powerful kick squarely on the demon's head. Intently observing Shin's brother in action, Yu's eyes remained steadfast on the unfolding skirmish. In that moment, a firm resolve crystallized within him, a commitment to forge his own destiny as a shinobi. Amidst the ongoing clash, the shinobi exuded an aura of unyielding coolness as it regarded the demon below. In response to the formidable kick, the demon anchored a robust foot forward, a desperate bid to maintain balance amid the tumult. Yet, the telltale sign of crimson, blood dripping from a significant blow to the head, painted a stark portrait of the demon's vulnerability. The shinobi's focused eyes, fixated on the tenacious adversary, 
betrayed a nuanced blend of astonishment and respect. Surprised by the demon's unwavering resolve to stand tall, the shinobi prepared for the ensuing dynamics of a battle that seemed far from conclusion. Yu, grappling with the enigma of the demon's resilience, marveled at its ability to endure such a fierce attack. However, the tide shifted abruptly as the demon's hair snaked out, and snaring the shinobi's foot. The surprise in the shinobi's eyes evolved into a complex expression, blending astonishment with a subtle hint of concern, as the unexpected twist in the battle unfolded. Sent hurtling through the air, the shinobi became a mere projectile, crashing onto the ceiling with an impact that echoed through the battleground. Unyielding, the demon's relentless assault persisted. Its hair, now a lethal barrage, sought out the fallen shinobi, impaling the ceiling in every direction where the agile warrior had been tossed. Drained from the exertion of immense energy, the demon wore the vestiges of its malevolence in a lingering purplish aura. However, an unexpected counterplay unfolded from the very point of the prior onslaught. Ice, a harbinger of change, emerged and initiated a process of crystalline formation, freezing the tips of the demon's hair. The glacial cascade continued its relentless progression, freezing every strand and advancing toward the demonic head. With a burst of speed, the shinobi surged toward the faltering demon, shattering the frozen hair in his path with an agile flourish. The demon, anticipating the oncoming assault and devoid of its impaling hair, found itself vulnerable. In a decisive move, the shinobi delivered a punishing knee shot to the demon's head. The shinobi does not stop its attack there and continues to follow the demon after the knee kick. Poised to deliver a decisive punch, the shinobi's intentions were abruptly halted as the demon, defying expectations, seized the shinobi's hands. Caught off guard, the shinobi was confronted with a nightmarish visage. A grotesque demon with two mouths and blood trickling from its nose. The air thickened with tension as the demon, fangs exposed, prepared to deliver what could be the decisive and fatal blow. Maintaining a steadfast sense of control, the shinobi responded to the grotesque figure with a decisive kick, propelling the demon through the air with unyielding force. The inevitable crash into the wall resonated with a powerful impact. With measured determination, Shin's brother advanced toward the demon, each step purposeful and resolute. In his wake, a powerful chilling aura emanated from his hand, creating an ethereal display that marked his unwavering intent. In tandem with this display of prowess, the air itself seemed to thicken, creating a palpable density that did not escape Yu's discerning awareness, signaling the imminent escalation of the unfolding battle. Teetering on the brink of demise, the demon, desperate for survival, initiated a gruesome evolution. The grotesque mouth in its head, a macabre spectacle, began to spew forth not just blood but a malevolent energy that permeated the battleground. The eerie cry, a haunting resonance, echoed as the top of the demon's head oozed with an otherworldly malice, signaling a nightmarish metamorphosis in its desperate struggle for survival. In a moment of dreadful realization, Shin discerned the culmination of the demon's gathering of negative energy, a precipice where full demonization loomed ominously. Shin, driven by desperation, pleaded his brother to intervene, to halt the process before the irreparable damage unfolded. The shinobi, a maestro of chilling arts, wove an arcane tapestry with a mesmerizing display of circling hands. His hands, aglow with a radiant blue akin to frozen flames, painted an ethereal picture of controlled power. Mirroring this arcane dance, a similar circling pattern manifested on the floor around the bewildered demon. The demonic entity, caught in the enigmatic spectacle, grappled with the unfolding mysticism, unable to fathom the nature of the chilling forces converging upon it. The shinobi, with a masterful flourish, merged both hands at the center, channeling an intense concentration of chilling energy. In a breathtaking display, frozen spikes emerged from the ground, materializing with a sharp brilliance that covered the entirety of the demon. Encased in this frozen embrace, the demon stood as a frozen testament to the shinobi's control over the elemental forces, a crystalline sculpture wrought in the heat of battle. Mesmerized by the unfolding tableau, you stood witness to a display that seemed to transcend the boundaries of the ordinary. With deliberate steps, the shinobi closed the distance to the ensnared demon. His hand, adorned with an air of authority, graced the hilt of his sword. With a swift and fluid motion, he drew the blade, revealing a frozen masterpiece, a blue sword wrapped in a mystical mist. The shinobi, now armed with this otherworldly blade, pointed it with unwavering intent at the demon, the tip positioned mere inches from its head, a visual representation of imminent mastery. 
With a decisive command, the shinobi ordered the sword to devour, triggering a spectacle of arcane mastery. The malevolence that once emanated from the demon seemed to succumb, drawn toward the hungry blade like a moth to a flame. Amidst the ethereal display, Yu, with a furrowed brow, sought clarification on the shinobi's actions. In response, Shin, elucidated that the sword's design was to consume and imprison the swirling negative energy, a strategic maneuver to confine the malevolent entity. The suction of the malevolent energy persisted, manifesting as undulating black waves converging upon the hungry sword. Gradually, the demon's once piercing blue eyes began to fade, their vibrant color drained away. Simultaneously, the second mouth on its head started to dissipate too. In a profound transformation, the demonic entity took on the form of a girl, tears streaming down her eyes. The inexorable suction reached its zenith, expelling every trace of malevolent energy. With a deliberate release, the shinobi unfurled his icy hold, and the remnants shattered into a myriad of frozen fragments. Within the confines of the sword, the once-consuming demon now appeared captured, a spectral figure trapped within the crystalline embrace. With a seamless motion, the shinobi sheathed his sword, a masterful conclusion to the spectral ballet. You stood in stunned disbelief as the demonic entity, now stripped of its malevolence, transformed back into a human form. Shin, in stark contrast, exhaled a sigh of relief, the weight of the moment lifting as the potential catastrophe was averted. The shinobi, in a display of calculated restraint, disclosed that he deliberately withheld the full extent of his power. A sense of discernment guided him, allowing him to perceive the woman in red clinging tenaciously to her humanity. Grasping the gravity of the situation, you acknowledged that without Shin's brother's intervention, the outcome could have been drastically different. With a tinge of regret, the shinobi addressed the unintended consequences of their recent actions, pointing out that that the both of them had disrupted weeks of methodical reconnaissance missions. Despite Shin's hope that his heroic attempt would earn the approval of his brother, the acknowledgement he sought remained elusive. Unveiling the calculated strategy behind his actions, the shinobi explained that he had deliberately kept the woman in the room, using her as bait to draw out the malevolent force orchestrating the attacks. The room's seal, a frozen temporal barrier, prevented the girl from succumbing to demonization. However, the act of breaking into the room inadvertently shattered the protective seal. In a gesture of gratitude, you attempted to stand up for Shin, recognizing that Shin had just saved his life. Yet, Shin, a voice of caution, pleaded with you to cease, acutely aware that his brother held the power to annihilate them both in the blink of an eye. The shinobi, with a gentleness belying his earlier prowess, carefully laid the girl on the ground. Swift as a fleeting moment, he disappeared from view and re-emerged behind you. His solemn proclamation hinted that you had already witnessed too much. Overcome by a sudden wave of light-headedness, Yu's consciousness waned, and with an unceremonious descent, he collapsed to the ground. As Yu's eyes threatened to seal shut, he caught a poignant glimpse of the two brothers in conversation. The older brother, driven by a protective love, expressed a heartfelt desire for a different fate for his younger sibling, a life unburdened by the trials he himself faced. With determination, he pledged to shield his only remaining family from the harshness of his own experiences. Shin agreed never to delve into the subject of the shinobi ritual again. And good night it was for you. As you keep sleeping, please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe.